different. Rishi Sunak has been told that he'll be on the wrong side of history in his handling of the infected blood scandal. His government suffered its first parliamentary defeat last night over when to compensate victims after 22 Tory MPs rebelled to support a Labour-led amendment. The eyes to the right, 246. The nose to the left, 242. <gasps> The eyes to the right were 246, the nose to the left were 242, so the eyes have it. The government is now required to set up a compensatory body within three months of the bill becoming law. Around 4,800 people were given blood infected with HIV and hepatitis C in the 1970s and 1980s. Very sadly, around half of those people have already died, and campaigners say time really is of the essence. Joining me now, columnist at the Daily Mirror, Susie Boniface, and former Conservative Minister David Mellor. We'll go to David first because you're very familiar, only too acutely familiar with this story, David, and we've talked to you about it before. So some people may not remember this happening and some people may not realise how it could have happened, but maybe you'll tell the story and explain your reaction to what's happened just now in the Commons. Yes, this was a terrible um, development when um, in order to deal with um, infected blood, um, efforts had to be made that were based around a failure to spot that when trying to treat people for um, the fact that their blood was not um, going to, um, you know, once they were cut, they weren't going to, it wasn't going to heal up, it was going to be enormously difficult. Every effort was made to get a blood clotting product. And unfortunately, um, the United States, where people sell their blood, was sourced. And of course, a number of the people who sold their blood uh, were people who were liable to be much higher than the average infected. So this is a truly dreadful, dreadful story. And um, I, I was involved in this because for a period I was the minister responsible for trying to sort this out. And in fact, I gave evidence strongly in favor of the people who were applying for proper compensation. I gave evidence uh, at the inquiry and it was one of the most moving moments of my life when a number of the people who felt they had been ignored elsewhere in the system came over and thanked me for having um, tried my best uh, to do the right thing. And so I am strongly in favour of everything possible being done uh, to ensure that these people receive, the victims receive proper compensation. Can you imagine when you've already got problems with blood clotting and that you don't your blood does not clot normally, itself a serious thing, when you find that uh, you will actually, you're actually in receiving treatment for that, you've actually been infected with a potentially deadly uh, HIV infection. I mean, one heart, one's heart bleeds for these folk. And I am desperately, desperately upset that the government, successive governments, haven't resolved this. Well, well, I know this isn't obviously of your doing, but maybe you might be able to explain, David, how this can possibly have taken so long. I mean, seven, we're talking about the 70s and the 80s. It's 2023. We hear so many people tragically died mm -hmm. along the way. And I've interviewed some of them over the years. And when they, when they kind of detail the catalogue of misery, the number of operations, hospitalizations, the curtailing of their lives in every way, not being able to work, not being able to socialise, mm. just really leading lives of so limited limited as a result of this, this, you know, terrible mistake, if that's what it can be said to be. I think people just won't understand why this has all taken so long and why it's an issue today in 2023. Well, as I said last time we spoke about this, I agree entirely with you. I think the problem is that um, having um, received the information that these blood products were contaminated and people were likely, therefore, 
to be being infected with a more serious disease than the one they were being treated for, what should have been done is generosity of spirit. And there should have been um, an acceptance of full liability and um, money paid out to allow uh, these folks, some of whom, alas, are now dead. And, uh, most of them will have their life um, prematurely uh, curtailed. Mm. And we should be generous. But it's not always easy to persuade certain parts of the government to be generous. And uh, this is true under Labour and under the Conservatives, that the Treasury will always want uh, to hold people's feet to the flames. Mm. Uh, I regret deeply. I mean, I was I, I stopped being involved in this um, in the late 1980s. Uh, shows how far back it goes. I, if I if I if I had been told you'll be giving interviews about this uh, in 40 odd years time, I would have thought we cannot be so awful to people who have been so cruelly and ill used by fate. Susie Boniface, you're listening to this. Uh, it, it, is, it is really a, a, a most extraordinary story, not least the fact that the government has suffered its first defeat on this. This phrase, on the right side of history, obviously depends hugely on the perspective of the person uttering it, not a phrase I think that's awfully helpful. But in this instance, you can pretty much see the justification for thinking, you know, if you don't vote in the most generous way to, to, to help these people after all these years, then this is a pretty despicable suggestion. Yes, well, um, David's right. He and many others on, the, on both sides of the House of Commons tried to get this fixed meant over the years, many, many times. Um, and, you know, a lot of them have given evidence at the contaminated blood inquiry. Andy Burnham was there as well uh, and, you know, got a standing ovation. And people have thanked people like David for, for going along and telling their truth and trying to get as much of it as they can. But I've got a correction. One thing, this wasn't a mistake. There was infected blood products containing hepatitis C and HIV, which were given to people who had haemophilia and had other reasons for blood transfusions over decades, long after it was known and the concerns started to be raised about those blood products. And then medical records were altered. They were tampered with. People who were teetotal were said in their medical records to be drunks and alcoholics, and that was why they got hep C. Um, it's a dreadful scandal and a disgusting cover-up. It's not just... A mistake, something happened by accident, whoops a daisy. It was fairly deliberate. And many ministers like David and like Andy, who tried to get to the bottom of it, were finding that their civil servants were not answering the questions properly or weren't investigating things properly internally. And there was, as there is with many institutions when there's a problem, just a, a, a circling of the wagons and a refusal to admit that there was a, a, a problem going on here. But to go to your main point about Rishi Sunak, what's astonishing is that he gave evidence at this inquiry, and I've covered that inquiry, and as David quite rightly says, it's a very emotional experience. There's a lot of people in that room who really deeply and, and personally are affected and care about what happens. There's no way that Rishi Sunak could have sat in there and given evidence and just ignored the atmosphere and the tenor of the room. Um, we all know that there are billions of pounds of compensation coming down the track. We all know that's happening no matter what. And um, what Rishi Sunak has done in that vote this week was to whip his party, that is to force them to vote against a compensation body. It is under those circumstances, considering there are many people on all sides of the House of Common um, who are perfectly noble, regardless of politics, and see this as what it is, an apolitical cross-party issue, who rebelled against Rishi Sunak, because actually whipping your party to vote against a compensation body is just flat cruelty. There isn't any other explanation for it. But it's one of those things which I suspect Rishi Sunak is doing quite a lot of and various policies at the moment, which is you know something is going to be happening and he's just kind of trying to shove it off and shove it off and shove it off a bit further down the tracks so it gets to the point where it's going to be Keir Starmer's problem. Keir Starmer's going to have to find the billions of pounds to pay these guys. Rishi Sunak doesn't want to do it right now. So he's just trying to push it further away so that you know the problems and the, the cash and everything else can be someone else's issue. And as David rightly points out as well, I think the Treasury is just their natural, normal instinct to delay and delay and delay until there's, there's no point where you, you have to start paying it. And by that point, hopefully a few more are dead. But we've already had 3,000 
people who've uh, been affected by this who've died. And there's one dies another every four days. And they're not just dying without cash in their pockets. There was one victim called Justine Gordon-Smith who um, gave an interview to the BBC yesterday and she talked about her dad. <coughs> he, was a, he got hep C. And she said he, he lost everything. He lost his home, his job, his wife, his health. He became a recluse. Their family lost lives and, and years of happiness and being together. All those times that just lost, they lost careers, they lost their dad. That's not the kind of thing that can ever be compensated with a cheque. But the cheque shows sorrow and it shows recognition. And that's the main thing those families haven't had. They haven't been recognised and they haven't been heard. And that's why it was allowed to go on for so long. Yeah, David Mellor, do, do you see Rishi Sunak's behaviour or his policy as a kind of professional political prevarication, this kicking into the long grass? Is that what he's doing? I think it's a lack of curiosity. Oh. Uh, I think his officials, I mean, their job is to try not to spend a lot of public money and uh, they take hard uh, cases uh, and try and um, not give way to even hard cases. But it's, it's very sad that it's come to this and very sad that it's gone on in the way that it has. And um, I mean, all I can say is that I, you know, sometimes when you're shown papers that you saw 30 years ago, you look at the notes you made and think, did I get this wrong or did I not? Now, I'm not claiming here to be the, a hero in this, not at all, because we fail. But I made notes when I was the Minister of Health saying, we're going to have to sort this out. It's got to be done and so on. And I'm you know, quite pleased, actually, to have read that because it suggested one wasn't part of this awful business where people will always make a note trying to stop action, normally uh, quite confident that they will be uh, anonymous and no one will ever hold them to account for this.